Hello. Okay, good afternoon, Year 11. How are we today? Okay, the body in motion. We're on to stage six. It's all about the anatomy today. Now, have I ever told you guys about the 1990s when there was a thing called mad cow disease happening? So mad cow disease, some cows are going a bit silly. So I came across these two cows that were on top of the hill. One was talking to the other one, having a bit of a chat. He said, wait, are you getting worried about all this mad cow disease talk? And the other cow says, no, nah, man, I'm a helicopter. <laughs> We, um, we, we, have, we have no mobiles, thank you. No mobiles, thank you. What? Thanks, guys, thank you. Just ne Next time, everyone, can we just um, turn it off, please, in the class? That'd be that'd be appreciated. We know the rules. Come on, thank you. Okay. If we would all turn on side, that'd be great. Thank you. So where was I? I was telling that very humorous joke. I don't know if you remember it, the humorous cow joke. So with the helicopter. So that brings us into a bit of anatomy today. So does anyone know where the humorous bone in their body is? One of these two. Oh, no, I think it's this one. No, you got it right. Well done, Liz. That's yeah. it. Yeah, so that's the humorous bone. Okay, so another little bit more anatomy. I was talking about a helicopter before. The blades make a bit of a circle. If you have a dot in the middle of the circle to the outside, what's that called? Anyone? Radius. Radius. Radius, yes, correct. Now, let's bring that back to anatomy. Does so anyone know where the radius bone is in the body? It's the opposite one. It's in your forearm. Forearm, correct. Well done, Mike. Thank you. Okay, so we've got two pretty simple bones there. This is all sort of stuff we know before, guys. So we've got the bones in the arm. Today's all about the human anatomy, the um, the terms of movement. So now we need a little bit of background knowledge with the muscles. So let's have a look now. We've got the arms, the bones. Now muscles. Let's try and do a little bit of a little bit of repetition here. So does anyone know the location of the gastrocnemius muscle? Mike, yeah, please just shout it out, guys, if you, if you think Calf about it. Calf muscle. Calf muscle, that's, a, that's the sort of everyday term. Yeah, perfect, well done. Okay, so we've got another one here with, on the calf muscle. Now, what are the two main lower leg bones called? Tibia and... Help, help, help. Help, help, help. You're on the right track, Liz, that's one. Tibia. You've got one, it's very, very similar. It's almost a rhyming sort of couple. Tibia and fibia. Tibia and fibia, well done, right. Mike. Yes, okay. that's it, okay. So another little bit of revision here, bones and muscles. So how many muscles make the quadricep? That's an easy one, guys. Quad bike, quad bike, quad bike, four, four. Perfect, well done. If I had a gold star, you'd get one. Okay, so now we're on to, what is the anatomical position? Does anyone want to stand up, maybe show me? Um, I think it's like um, the, the man on, the, um, when they went on that um, moon um, thing and, and they just had that body. Like a body like? So yeah, and they- You're on the right track, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, well done. So the anatomical position, nice and straight, palms forward, that's the anatomical position. Okay, so pretty pretty good, guys. So the main thing with today, though, is our learning intention is we want to know the anatomical terms of movement. There's nine of them. Before we get into the lesson and we know it all, does anyone actually know the nine terms and could rail them off? You no. probably no. do, but I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> you don't more than I do. Okay, guys, okay, so that's what today's lesson is. It's all about the anatomical terms of movement. So we know the muscles, we know the bones, which we've just done a little bit of revision on, and now it's actually putting that all together and how it works to, works away. So some of you might be going to university soon, going into maybe doctors, sort of nursing, bit of health profession. You need to know these anatomical terms to be able to describe the bones and the muscles and how they work. So. That's what we're going to do today. I think we've emailed it and you've all got the, the worksheet there. We've got it on your laptops. That's what we're going to be doing today. It's a little bit of a, it increases in the difficulty. Some simple questions at the start, building onto a bit tougher ones. But what I'll do first, I'll show you a few of the movements, give you a little bit of an explanation. So you can have sort of an idea, use me as a bit of a dummy, and you can get going that way. So the learning intentions today is to know the anatomical terms of movement be able to identify muscles and bones involved in the movement and understand how the multiple movement and joint contractions occur in an athletic movement sequence. Bit of a mouthful, but with the worksheets later on, we'll go through all that. And we've also, you can probably see out there as well, that, <coughs> excuse me, the success criteria for the lesson. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we'll get into it with a little bit of guide to discovery. I'll show you the motions. Try and remember it while you're sitting down there. You can even do the motions as well. Think of the proper names of the bones, the muscles, as we're going along. 
passage. First one we've got here is flexion and extension. They sound kind of familiar. Do you guys sort of heard those ones before? Apart from the word ex extending. Yeah, yeah. So, so to flex a muscle, most people sort of do that. You see people sort of, you know, guys at the beach sort of flexing the muscle sort of thing. That's not what we're after. We're actually the motion, the term of the movement. So what this is, so we're using our arms here and we've got the bicep. We're flexing this and this brings this forward. We're making this angle sh smaller. So we're flexing and then the opposite of that is extending. So flexing and extending. Pretty simple. A good way to remember these ones is the coupling. You've got go, goes one way, goes the other. So flexion, extension, that's the first one. Nice little simple one. And then we've got abduction and adduction. Now I said two different words there. Yeah. Abduction, AB with a B, and AD, adduction with a D. And they're quite similar, very similar. But a good way to remember them is we use our, where were we before, the anatomical position. So anatomical position, arms out. And we've got the midline of the body. Does anyone remember that one? Head to toe. Yeah, midline goes head to toe. Well done, Mike. That's it, all the way down. So what we're doing with abduction and adduction, abduction is we're taking something away from that midline of the body. So let's use our shoulder joints, and we're going using our arms upwards. So that movement there, that's abduction. And then bringing it back down, adduction. So abduction taking away, adduction bringing it towards the body. Add, adding, add taking away. Now, the way I used to remember that when I was learning it, when you get sort of abducted, abduction, you get taken away. We don't want anyone to get abducted. It's a good one. Okay. So we don't actually want anyone to get abducted, but that's the way I used to remember it. Abduction going away and abduction bringing it back towards the body. Okay, so then we've got medial rotation and lateral rotation. So as we're going through these guys, just think of the terms, think of your body. Your body's the best sort of diagram you can use. You can practice it as you go. So medial rotation, lateral rotation, using that midline of the body again. Medial rotation, rotating inwards towards that midline of the body. And lateral rotation, rotating outwards. So a good way to do that, even with our hip joint, we can sort of rotate inwards. That's the medial rotation. You're rotating that ball and socket hip joint inwards. And then lateral rotation, rotating it outwards. Okay, so we're getting through these ones. I'll just do a couple more, and then we might give you onto your worksheets, onto your laptops. You can go through it yourself. Okay, so where are we up to? So we'll go to elevation and depression. Now, these are these similar sort of words we use in everyday life. Elevation, anyone know what an elevator does? Goes up. Elevator goes up. Okay, so we've got our shoulders, and we're using them upwards, that is elevation. And then if we're going down, what happens when you're depressed? Yeah, a little bit, little bit upset, a little bit down in the dumps. So elevation going up and depression going down. Mm -hmm. So it's a good way to remember. You can see we're doing it in that coupling. One goes one way, one goes the other. Okay, then we're on to pronation and eversion, otherwise known as supination. I enjoy this one because it reminds me when I used to work with Foot Locker selling running shoes. So pronation is a thing we use in sort of running, sort of athletes, foot, foot lock, uh, rebel sport, things like that. So you picture these as your feet. Pronation is your feet are falling inwards. And you get those shoes with the arch support to correct your alignment, to bring you back nice and straight. <coughs> Excuse me. So pronation, the feet going inwards, supination going outwards. Okay, we're sort of, sort of getting the concepts, guys. I think so. Think so? Yeah. Yes, that, that's what the whole lesson is today. So we're going yeah. through all these concepts, getting to know them. You can sort of practice them, use the resources you have there, going forward from there. Okay, so we've got a few other ones that you can see. One, I'll go down to number nine here, that I like is circumduction. Now, who knows what circumduction is? Circum... Circum... Um, navigate, go around Australia. Round Australia is similar, similar. So it is to do a circle, so it's a joint that makes a circular motion. Yeah, 